Now, this week, Minister Jack Chambers delivered his very first budget speech, and it's clearly a pre-election budget. The minister announced a range of tax cuts and expenditure measures worth over €10 billion. I'm joined by International Tax Director with PwC and Council Member and Treasurer of the ICBA, Graham Attlee, to break down what Budget 2025 means for business. Graham, you're very welcome. Thank you for doing this for us. Thanks, Roger. Good to talk to you. Can we start by looking at corporate tax measures? What was there of interest in uh, yesterday's budget? Yeah, on the corporate side, Patrick, the most important announcement was the introduction of a participation exemption for foreign source dividends. So this will provide for a simplified mechanism for double tax relief for companies with foreign subsidiaries. Now, it had been flagged in advance, so it's not a surprise, but it is good news as Ireland is a bit of an outlier in not having this exemption in already. We're hoping for a best-in-class regime uh, to increase Ireland's competitiveness as a holding company location. Uh, the draft legislation will be published in next week's finance bill, but it seems to be a bit narrower than we were hoping for. Uh, however, the, it is positive that the Minister did mention that he will give further consideration around widening geographic, sc- geographic scope and for a foreign branch exemption, both of which I would consider very important for Ireland's competitiveness. Uh, I think it's critical that we don't become complacent around the multinational sector. Um, while the Apple funds are, for, from the recent case, are clearly a one-off windfall, the higher corporation tax receipts that we've been receiving in recent years didn't happen by accident. Uh, it happened due to policy decisions by previous governments, uh, great work by the IDA, a skilled, motivated, diverse workforce. You know, we're an open economy, common law, EU, English speaking, plenty of availability of people with other language skills, including non-nationals. So Ireland is attractive to multinationals. But we can't treat this as something temporary that will inevitably disappear, nor can we take it for granted that we've done all we can and they're here to stay. We need to keep working hard to keep Ireland at the top table, keep us competitive. And uh, that's one reason why improving infrastructure is so important. But also when it comes to regimes like the participation exemption, it's absolutely very important that we're EU compliant and that we're OECD compliant. But after that, we need to be best in class. So it makes no sense to be anything other than best in class. So we'll see how that develops. Now, you mentioned the Apple case, the so-called Apple case, that um, there was a recent judgment from the European courts. Was there any mention of that yesterday? Yeah, there was. Uh, The minister announced that there'd be a strategic framework put in place in relation to the allocation of these uh, funds that were received from the Apple case, uh, over 14 billion or so, I believe. Uh, the minister emphasised that the transformational nature of this revenue and the importance of ensuring that it is carefully deployed in supporting Ireland's future economic development. And he pointed out four known, four known challenges uh, that will be emphasised that will be uh, housing, energy, water and transport sectors. So this is very welcome as an overall strategy. Now we have no detail what exactly this means and obviously it's critical that it's spent efficiently and effectively so it makes a real difference in these four key areas. But I think for business, that's probably particularly interesting because as we've highlighted time and time again in our business sentiment surveys and also in our Jim Jim Powers economic report, these are the areas that big business, that FDI are most concerned about. That's right. Absolutely critical to FDI. Um, Income tax measures. What did we hear yesterday? Yeah, good news on income tax. Uh, A number of measures to increase tax credits, to increase the standard rate cutoff band and to decrease USC. So overall, someone on, say, 50 to 100,000 a year will get an extra between 850 and 1,000 euro into their pocket each year just from those measures. And on top of that, uh, there's an energy credit of 250 euro coming, uh, half to be paid before Christmas and half after. And finally, a nice benefit for renters. The existing 750 tax credit that renters get is increased to 1,000 per person. And unusually, that's backdated to 2024. So... Renters will get an extra €250 Euro this year, plus then moving on to the full 1000 credit next year. Finally, Graeme, are there any other measures of note that we should mention before we wrap? Sure. Uh, lots of other measures across a wide spectrum of areas. Uh, two on the stamp duty property side, uh, worth noting that there's a, there's a new 6% rate of stamp duty for residential property purchases over £1.5 million. So that means the, that it's 1% for the first million, it's 2% for the next half mil. And then 6% kicks in from one and a half on. Um, the rate of stamp duty on bulk purchases of residential properties, that's 10 properties in a 12-month period. Uh, it doesn't include apartments. Uh, that increases from 10% to 15%. Uh, a few other um, ones to note. Uh, in inheritance tax, the thresholds have gone up. So a Category A, which is children, uh, 
up to date, they can receive 335,000 tax free on an inheritance. Now it's 400,000 per person uh, for children. Category B, which is brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, that's gone up from 32.5 to 40,000 threshold. And then category C, the other threshold has gone from 16 uh, to 50 to 20,000. Uh, there's an extension of the reduced uh, 9% VAT rate on, on electricity and gas for another six months. So that helps everybody over the winter period. Um, there's an increase in the annual limit for the small benefit exemption from 1,000 to 1,500. What this does is it allows employers to provide up to five non-cash benefits to employees per year. So that's a very welcome change. Uh, then finally, the all reliables um, excise duty on 20 cigarettes is up by one euro. So that brings the price of a packet to about 18 euro. Uh, there's an excise duty now on e-cigarettes. And that'll bring the price of what the minister said was a standard two mil cartridge to over nine euro when that comes into force in mid 2025. And lastly, no change in the price of a pint. There's a lot in it. Graham Attlee, thank you so much for breaking down what budget 2025 means for business and ICBA members. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick.